I will bless the Lord at all Amen. times. Oh. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his holy name together. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord once again? Yes, sir. When I think of any place I could be, there's no place like being in the presence of the Lord. But truly, the Lord has been good to us. Yes, he has. And brought us from a mighty long way. Has he been good to anybody this morning? Oh, he's blessed somebody this morning. And we ought to be glad about what the Lord has done for us. The songwriter says, see what the Lord has done. Yes. You ought to count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Will you join me in prayer? All wise, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your presence once again. Father, we ask that you take charge of all that we're about to say and do this hour. Oh, Lord, we ask that you take control of our minds, take control of our spirits, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Now be with us, lead, guide, and direct through this worship service. For these and all of the blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Certainly we want to welcome you once again to our worship services here at the Jerusalem Baptist Church. We trust that God has been gracious to each one of you. We're so thankful for all that the Lord has provided. We're thankful for our rising up early this morning and for him starting us on our way. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for what he has done for us. This time, this time we're going to ask our choir if they would just open up uh, with a selection of their choice. Uh, once they have finished the selection, we're going to ask Deacon Staley if he would lead us in our morning prayer. Uh, let us move forward in that order. Hold my hand, Lord. Yeah, 
God, we come this morning thanking you for anchored souls, or in times such as we live this day and time, we need an anchored soul in the Lord. Little girl in Raleigh lost her life in a Christmas parade. Three young men, University of Virginia football players, lost their lives. And one of their teammates took the life. Young lady on vacation in New Mexico lost her life. And Mexico wants to cover up the incident, saying it was one thing when it was another. And then here in our own church family, Reverend Phyllis Jones, Sister Joanne Jones, many others going through another mass shooting in Colorado Springs, Colorado on yesterday. 
Five kill, 18 injured. And Lord, it's nowhere we can go now that anything that could happen will happen. But we thank you, Lord, that wherever we go, by faith we know that you are holding our hand. So we come this morning, we just say thank you, Lord. That in spite of all that's happening within this world that we live in, we still have to give thanks. And we thank you, Lord, that in the book of 2 Timothy, it tells us, chapter 3, concerning the perilous times, in which we are living. Men will be lovers of men, parents unable to do anything with their children, headedness, high-mindedness. But we're so thankful that in spite of all this happening, Jesus is still love. People are looking for the answers, even we in the church. Look around and may ask, where is the answer? But the answer and the hope is in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. So Lord, in spite of all that's happening, help us by faith to continue to look to you. Help us to keep our hearts and minds focused on you. Even the more, cause us to pray more, dive in your word even the more. Because it's in you, Lord, that we find hope, that we live, we breathe, and we have our being. A lot of these things catch us by surprise, but you are not caught by surprise. Because you neither slumber, nor you don't sleep. So while we are sleeping, your angels will cover it right now by your angels. As we sit and stand in this sanctuary, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. Even outside of these walls, we're still covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for our pastor, the entire first family here in Jerusalem. We thank you for this entire Jerusalem church family. And we pray your blessings upon all in this body of Christ. Bless us as we go from these four walls to be a blessing to someone else. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation. And Lord, we lift up Arthur and Connie Jones as they travel up and down the dangerous highway. Those who are hurting especially at this time of year because of the loss of loved ones who were with us all last year. But you saw fit to remove them. But God, they are still with us in heart and in spirit. And we thank you for the word that you have placed in pastor's heart this day. And we know it's going to fall on good soil. And it will accomplish what you have uh, designated it to accomplish and Lord when no more Thanksgivings to be celebrated here no more Christmases seasons to be celebrated here we thank you for that glorious time that you've already prepared for a prepared people where there are will be no more death no more sickness the only crying will be joyous crying but until that time, Lord, help us to keep our hearts and minds focused on you and to do your will. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank
Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah, church. Somebody ought to say thank, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. For what Lord. the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you. For your rising thank early you. this morning. Thank Somebody you. ought to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the Lord bringing you out. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. For healing your body. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Put clothes on your back and thank food you. on your table, a roof over your head. Somebody ought to be thankful. Thank you. Hallelujah, church. voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude Woo. all that I am and ever hope to be Lord I owe it all to thee yes, sir. I'll tell you I'm thankful today Woo. I'm thankful that he didn't allow my bed to be the last place yes, sir. that he allowed me to get up yes, sir. on this side with a reasonable portion of help and strength. Clothing in my right mind. Yes, sir. Somebody ought to be thankful today. Thank you. The songwriter said that if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Yes, sir. Oh, where in the world would I be? I could have been dead and sleeping in my grave. Yes, sir. But the Lord saw fit to touch me with his finger of love. And I got up this morning. Anybody glad about it? Anybody happy about it? That the Lord brought you out? Oh, yes. We have so much to be thankful for. For what the Lord has done for us. We need to continue to pray for those who are part of our church family here. Sadat, we're praying for you. Sister Ramona, we're praying for you. Raymond Ellis, we need to continue to lift him up in prayer. Thomas Long, lift him up in prayer. Uh, Judy Phillips, lift her up in prayer. Sister Annie Mae Price, lift her up in prayer. And see, you don't always need to know what's going on, but just pray for somebody. Hallelujah! Prayer changes things. How many believe that prayer changes yes, things? Yes, sir! If we as a people would just learn how to pray for folk, you don't have to launch an investigation to pray for somebody. But those that know the value and worth of prayer ought to know how to pray. Sister Helen Stoner, continue to lift her up in prayer. That the Lord will continue to work it out in the lives of those that we know that need our prayers. Good to see Sister Velveeta. We trust that God has been gracious unto you. Hallelujah. That he's strengthening you every day of your life. Amen. Certainly good to have you in our presence this day. And I want to say to the Jerusalem family, I want to make you aware that as we come to the close of one year and we usher in another year, that this is going to be a busy time for us as we prepare for the coming year. Our budget meeting is on tomorrow night at 630 for those of you who are part of that and implore you to come out and as we can start to put things in motion as we move forward. And I know uh, we're going through the holiday season, Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas is right around the corner, but there's still a lot of work that we need to do as a church and as a body. And I will be um, diligently working on things as we move forward uh, because we want to do everything that we do. We want to be pleasing in the Lord's eyesight. Yes. Certainly we're thankful and gracious unto God for the thing, how he's blessed us and the things that he has allowed us to be able to do. Amen. On next Sunday, there will be a brief church meeting because there's some other work that we need to do on our other building that's just up the hill. We had some water issues with the basement, and I'll be bringing some recommendations before you on, on next uh, Sunday as we uh, look at uh, taking care of those things and addressing those issues and those concerns. But we are eternally grateful for all that the Lord has done for us. Amen. I know that many of you may be traveling and, um, next week and uh, some other things because of Thanksgiving. But I just implore you to be prayerful and be careful right. in all that you do. And we need to be in prayer for one another. Amen. That we ask God to have a hedge of a protection around all of us. Yes. That he takes care of us in our travels and the places that we uh, will go to share and be with our families. Yes. But certainly we're grateful 
for all that the Lord has done for us. There's a word for us found in the gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. And I want to lift verses 11 through 17. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 17. When you have it, say amen. That's the gospel according to St. To St. Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse and concluding with the 17th verse. We find these words recorded. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Yeah. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were clean. Amen. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? And where are the other nine? Huh. After a selection from the choir, I want to talk to us about some evidence. Hey, amen. Some evidence That's all right, of being thankful. Yes. Yeah. 
all of you for your prayers and let's continue to uh, lift her and her family up in prayer uh, every day but we're thankful for all that the Lord has done for us join me in prayer Father God we are thankful today the song says that every day is a day of thanksgiving which means that we ought to be able to look around and find something to be thankful for Lord, we pray right now that you touch every heart under the sound of my voice. That someone's life might be transformed right in your presence. Father, we pray right now that you would help us to bring our wandering into focus. That we can focus on your word, Lord. Oh, speak to our hearts, Lord, as we endeavor to be more like you. Father, right now we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that is acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And now, Lord, we ask that you just be with us because, Lord, we know without you we can do nothing. O oh Lord, we're thankful for the visitation of thy spirit. Yes. Upon these, your people, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray right now that you would just lift us up, Lord, where we feel torn down. That you open us up, Lord, that we might be receptive. That you just put us on in the right mindset and in the right frame of mind, Lord, that we can worship you freely this morning. Let some stuff go, Lord, that we can give your other name praise. Now, Lord, bless us as only you can do it. For these and all of the blessings we ask and we pray. It is in the marvelous, matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we ask these things. And the people of God say, Amen. Some evidence of being thankful. Whether you realize it or not, being thankful is more than just saying, I'm thankful. There are a whole host of things that will follow which will speak to how thankful you really are. Oh, my Lord. And all of us, when we look at our lives, I don't care what your, your, your last 12 months have looked like, but if you're a child of God, you can find something to be thankful for. Yes. Oh, you may not stop comparing yourself to other folks. No. Look at how the Lord has blessed you. Yes. And brought you from a mighty long yes. way. And I just can't believe that it, in, in anybody in here that can't find something <laughs> to be thankful for. Amen. I mean, when you look around, there's some folk who were here last year who've gone on. Yes. But yet you're still here. Yes. 
there's some things that have been told and said about you. And people didn't give you a chance of even making it. But look at you, you're sitting here in your right mind. Somebody tried to get you to give up. But the Lord told you to run on a little while longer. And you're here right now. Somebody told you that you, you don't need to try to go to church because you've got too many health problems. But all praise be to God, the Lord made a way out of no way. Yes, somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. In our preaching text, if you will look at it with me for a little while, it says in verse 11 of Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter, now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. It was an in-between time because in Galilee were the Jews and Samaria were the Samaritans or the people, the Gentiles, who were non-Jewish. In the in-between region, uh, people who had leprosy could not reside in their communities. And so they were put in what we call leprous colonies that were in between Samaria and Galilee. And I'm so glad that Jesus has some in-between moments. Because when you look at your life and my life, we have oftentimes find our, found ourselves in some in-between situations. Oh, don't come up here and act like you've been a devout believer all your life. But it is during these in-between moments that the Lord thought enough of you and I that he visited us. And if it had not have been for some in-between moments when the Lord came by to see about you, Many of us would not be here, right here, and right now. So along the border between Samaria and Galilee, Jesus decides to visit this region. The Bible tells us that as he was going into a village, ten men had leprosy met him. And we know that leprosy was a disease that had no cure. And in that time, they were put into isolation. They could not be around their families. The only people that they knew were the other lepers. Regardless of your religious background, regardless of your uh, family uh, tree, uh, lepers were, were all placed together in these colonies. They were cut off from the other folk. They were put in communities where they could only interact with one another. And one can envision that uh, these ten that the Bible talks about had been living on the margins of life. They were going through their own in-between period because there were many people who would not even come close to these regions, let alone come into contact with people who had been given this dreaded disease. And for whatever reason, Jesus decided, and everything that Jesus did, he did it for a reason. Somebody ought to be glad today that when you were in your in-between period, that the Lord showed up on your doorstep. You know, those in-between periods when you were not fully committed to Christ. Has anybody ever been there? You know, there's some folk that come church and they just play church, but they're not really committed to the Lord. In other words, they'll come and get what they can get, and they'll leave and go back to their old ways of doing things. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Does anybody know anybody like that? We've been there ourselves. We have not always been committed to the things of Christ Jesus, but when we were going through our in-between periods, we ought to be glad that the Lord came and see about us. Oh, I don't know about you, but he came to see about me. Oh, let me get back to the text. So here they were, these lepers. And the Bible says that they stood at a distance because they were not supposed to approach anybody. They knew the protocol. They knew what they were supposed to do. But when they stood at a distance, it tells us that they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. In other words, they were at their wit's end. 
because nobody would touch them. They were at their wits end because nobody had the capacity to love them enough to, 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 to try to get them to a place where somebody could help them. They had accepted the fate that they would never be embraced by society because of what they were going through. And here Jesus visits them, and then they, when they see him, they recognize who he is. My beloved, if you've ever gone through a period in your life when you've been distraught, and you come into the presence of the Lord, it is like the difference between day and night. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been so, I don't know, we, all of y'all are good folks, or maybe y'all can relate to this, but have you ever been so stoned out of your mind that you recognize that where you were was not where God would have you to be? And, and sometimes it requires us to hit rock bottom before we recognize that the Lord wants us to come up. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, maybe most of you have been good all your lives and you can't relate to these periods that I'm talking about. But there have been some times in my life when I knew I wasn't doing right. But, but, but I had to run into a brick wall in order for me to understand that where I was in life was not where the God that I serve wanted me to be. Does, does anybody else, else in here know what I'm talking about? So here they were. This was the plight of these ten men. They cried out with a loud voice. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Verse 14 says, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. That's what I like about Jesus. When you cry out to him, he'll give you something that's going to help you. You know, a whole lot of folk you cry out to, the only thing they're going to do is run your business in the ground. But gee, aren't you glad that Jesus isn't that way? And that when these ten men cried out, he, he gave them something that would help them. And he says, go show yourselves to the priest. In other words, he was trying to test their obedience. Obedience is so important. He's testing their obedience. And the Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. In other words, they didn't need the priest. You see, what you have to realize in life is that when you've got Jesus, you've got everything that you need. And what it requires of us is obedience to do what he's calling us and telling us we need to do. Go show yourselves to the priest. And the Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. In verse 15, it says one of them, when he saw he was healed, when he looked at his hands, and they look mute. When he put his hands upon his face and his skin felt different, he knew that something had happened in his life. This one of, one of them, when he saw he was healed, he said, I can't just go home to mom and dad. But I've got to go back and tell the one that healed me. I've got to tell him thank you. You see, when you're going to exhibit some evidence of being thankful, there's some things that you need to realize. <laughs> well, first and foremost, we need to realize that our blessings are designed to change us. That means that if God has done something for you, then it ought to make all the difference in the world in your life. I wish I had somebody praying for it. We ought to allow our blessings to change us. How will our blessings change us? Your blessings ought to change your direction. It ought to change your mindset. It'll cause you to do something different and, and realize that your change hadn't come by, by your own hand, but it came by the, the power and the authority of Almighty God. There's some folk in the church, when you've been blessed, you ought to be a change in your life. In other words, you ought to do things differently than the way you did them 20 years ago because the Lord came into your life and changed you. This one, his life was changed could not continue along the pathway that he had been involved in. But the Bible tells us there were ten of them. And yes, my beloved, there were nine of them who missed Thanksgiving because they were too busy being caught up in themselves. And I don't know why they went about their merry way, but maybe they're a lot like you and I, that our agendas are so full, and really our blessings are all about us rather than about God. I wish I had somebody praying with me. Do you ever, have you ever met anybody that they'll pray and pray and worry God to death? 
And when the Lord opens up the windows of heaven and pours them out a blessing, that they turn their back and they don't have any time for God. Have you ever met anybody like that? Is that your story? Is that my story that we, we do, we're, we're doing everything we're big enough to do and we take God's blessings for granted? We pray for healing and then when God heals us, heals us, we won't darken the doors of the church. We ask for deliverance. We ask God to bless us with a good job. And then when he gives us a good job, we won't pay anybody, let alone God. We won't do anything the way the Lord told us to do. We won't even worship the Lord. Some folk, when they get the monkey off their back, go about their own merry way. Now I envision that out of these nine fellows, that they all had their own agenda. Somebody wanted to catch up on things that they had missed out on. And so they didn't give God any time. Some of them had to go back and visit family and let them know that there had been a change in their life. But, but they had forgotten about the one who had brought about the change in their lives. So many of us, uh, we want other folk to see. But sometimes we have to stop worrying about what other folks see and give God some praise and give God some credit for delivering us from the things that we're going through in life. Is there anybody thankful today for what the Lord has done for you? Is there anybody thankful when, when you look back over your life and see where the Lord has brought you from? Is there anybody thankful for your healing? Is anybody thankful? Then you ought to have some evidence, realizing that our blessings should change us. But not only should our blessings change us, it should compel us to do something different. Oh, Jesus said, he asked, we're not all ten cleansed. But he looked around and he only saw the one. And he began to ponder, where are the other nine? And my beloved, I wonder, are you one of the nine? Are you one of the one that came back to tell the Lord thank you? You see, when you allow your blessings to change you, it will cause you to come back and tell the Lord thank you for what he's done for you. If you've been healed of your infirmities, you can't sit down on God and act like you don't have a God on your side. I stop by to let somebody know that when the Lord gets on the inside, and begins to work on the outside. I can't help but tell somebody about where the Lord has brought me from. You see, when I look back over my own life, when people didn't give me a chance of making it, I thank God that he's a good God, that he's an on-time God, that he's an everywhere God. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I want somebody to know my own testimony. And my testimony is simply this. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where in the world would I be? Is that anybody's testimony? Does anybody know that if it had not been for Jesus, we could not have made it this far? So he looked, and there was one who had came back. And not only did he come back, but he came back. The Bible says that when he was healed, he came back and gave God praise. You see, sometimes in life, your blessings should not only change you, but your blessings should cause you to go back and give God some praise. Your blessings ought to redirect you and cause you to live life differently because the Lord has visited you. When you were going through the margins of life, when you were in the in-between periods, has anybody ever been there? Has anybody ever been on the outside looking in and wondering how you were going to make it? But all by the grace of God, he made a way somehow. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? He came back because God had been good to him. He said, wait a minute, I've been healed. I've, I've been on the outside looking in, but I can't help to tell somebody. I like the way the Bible says that he came back. It tells us that he put everything in perspective. And many of us need to get put some things in perspective in our own lives. Don't you think that it's all about you? But you need to take a minute and survey your own situation. And when you look at your own life, you will come to the conclusion that if it had not been for Jesus, that you could not have made it this far, you would come to the conclusion 
that I've got to take a time out and go back and tell the one that brought me out, thank you. I've got to go back and tell the one that healed me, thank you. I've got to go back and tell the one that loved me, thank you. I've got to tell the one that made a way out of no way that if it had not been for you, I could not have made it this far. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I've got to go back and tell Jesus that when other folk counted me out, you told me I could make it and run on a little while longer. I got to go back and tell Jesus that you my hope in ages past and all my hope for tomorrow when people gave up on me. You never gave up on me, but you inspired me to go on a little while longer. I got to tell Jesus, thank you. Because when I didn't have a chance on my own, you made a way out of no way. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? If it had not been for the love of God, many of us could not have made it this far. Think about your own life. Think about where the Lord has brought you from. He's brought somebody from a mighty long way. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I stopped by to let you know today that you only can't nobody do you like the Lord can. Because the Lord will make a way out of no way. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Has he been good to anybody? Has he blessed anybody? Tell the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Our blessings should cause us to change, should cause us to go back and turn back to Jesus. But then look at the other part of the text. It says that when he went on them, when he saw he was healed, he came back and offered God praise. And he just didn't praise him any kind of way. But the Bible says he praised him with a loud voice. He didn't care who was watching. He didn't care who was listening. If God has done anything for you, you will not care who's sitting beside you on the pew, but you ought to be able to say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. And when they look at you like you're crazy and tell you you don't take all that, you need to be able to look at them in the eye and say, yes, it does take all of that. Because what you don't understand is where I come from. What you don't understand is what he brought me out of. What you don't understand is how he blessed me. What you don't understand is how good God has been to me. When I didn't have anybody on my side, the Lord reached way down and picked me up and turned my life around. Somebody knows what I'm talking about today. Has the Lord been good to anybody? Has he blessed anybody? Has he healed anybody? They that wait upon the Lord. The Bible says they shall renew their strength. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe that somebody here today has been thankful for what the Lord has done for you. And you ought to have some evidence. When was the last time you gave God some praise? When was the last time that you cried out with a loud voice? And then verse 16 says, he threw himself at Jesus' feet. That means he began to worship him. And I don't care where you've come from. Don't you ever forget the importance of worshiping the Lord. Or uh, some folk will look at you and say, why are you going to church all the time? But you don't realize how good God has been to me. You don't realize where he's brought me from and what he's brought me out of. The blessings that I have are not my own, but they've come from the Lord. I tell my children all the time that you need to be careful how you walk around my house. You need to be careful how you eat from my table. Because what you don't realize, that what's on that table, God gave it to me. The money in the bank, the Lord gave it to me. The blessings that I have come from God. And you can't just, you can't just sit there and act like it's not important. Because God's been good to me. The Lord is a way maker. How many know that he's a way maker? Is there any evidence today? That the Lord has blessed anybody? Is there any evidence today that the Lord has been gracious to anybody? Is there any evidence today? I tell you, I'm a witness because God has brought me from a mighty long way. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. He put running in my spirit. He gave me a peace and told me to go on a little while longer. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'll be glad if I have to be glad by myself. But I'm so glad. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. Oh, thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, your pastor wants to be some evidence of being thankful. And I am. I thank God for each one of you every day, whether you realize it or not. Because you've helped make me the man of God that I aspire to be. And I thank God for that. Yeah, there are challenges. Sure they are. But I'm thankful. Thankful for your prayers. I'm even thankful for the headache. Lord, thank you for hard-headed folk who teach you how to pray. But I'm most importantly, I'm thankful for your love and how you love me and my family unconditional. And I'm thankful for that. And I love you equally as well. I want you to know that when I look all across the landscape of this country, across the state of North Carolina and these communities, there ain't any greater people than I hear at Jerusalem Baptist Church. And I've seen some stuff. But you are the greatest. And I thank God for you. And I didn't want today to go by without me telling you that. And I thank God that he placed me among a people of great love and great faith. And let us continue to be thankful unto him for what he's done for us. God bless you and God keep you. Perhaps there's someone here today that does not know Jesus in the free pardon of sin. Man, woman, boy, girl, as you stand to your feet, you know that if you die today, that heaven won't be your home. We offer Christ to you today. Is there one today that you out of the ark of safety and you know you are? Won't you come and give your heart to Christ? If you're here today and you've made a decision for Christ and you're without a church home and the Lord is speaking to your heart, I would bid you to come by letter of Christian experience, candidate for baptism, whatever your situation is. But I implore you to not put off today what the Lord is telling you you need to do right now. Is there one today? Let us pray. Eternal and all wise Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for what our ears have heard. Lord, we're thankful for what our hearts are feeling right now. And Lord, right now we ask that you be in the midst of all that we're about to do when we move from this place. Some are standing for one thing and some are standing for something altogether different. But Lord, we come realizing that if it had not been for you, none of this would be possible. And we come with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, because we love you, Lord. We admonish you, Lord. We, 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 we adore you, Lord, for all the things that you do on our behalf. And now, Lord, we pray that you be with us individually and be with us collectively. Help us become the church that you would have us to be. Bless and keep us only unto thee. And now, Lord, be with us. We thank, we're thankful for all that you've done. Bless those hearts who are in need, Lord, and help us to be vessels, Lord, willing to help. Now, Lord, bless us as only you can do it. For these and all the blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, our final benediction is let the church say amen. Let